This week on Jerusalem Dateline, it's official. Israelis will be heading to the polls for a third time in less than a year to elect a government. Will a coalition finally be put together? And the shocking story of how Christian refugees are being persecuted by a UN agency. Plus, a Lebanese businessman donates one of the most unusual gifts ever given to Israel's Holocaust Memorial. All this and more this week on Jerusalem Dateline. Hello and welcome to this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. I'm Chris Mitchell. For the third time within a year, Israelis must vote for a national government. It comes after Israel's parliament was unable to form a coalition, and it puts Israel in uncharted political waters. The Knesset had 21 days to form a government, but its time ran out on midnight Wednesday. The failure by Israel's parliament comes after both Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his chief political rival, former IDF Chief of Staff Benny Gantz, were unable to gain a 61-seat majority. Now Israelis face elections again on March 2nd. It's the third time within a calendar year, and it's possible the results might be the same as the previous two elections. Blue and white co-leader Yair Lapid warned Israelis about a bitter campaign. Keep your children away from the television. These elections are going to be a festival of hate, violence and disgust, so they will not see what the elected of the nation are telling them. The third elections provide an opportunity for Benjamin Netanyahu to continue his political career. He faces three indictments on charges of fraud, bribery and breach of trust. But until his trial is over, which could take months or even years, he can continue to serve as prime minister and participate in the next election. One issue most Israeli politicians can't agree on is how the UN agency called UNRWA perpetuates the Palestinian refugee problem. As CBN correspondent Julie Stahl reports, some believe the agency is responsible for indoctrinating a new generation to hate Jews and destroy the Jewish state. For 70 years, the UN Relief and Works Agency has operated refugee camps for Palestinians. It is about time to shut down UNRWA. They are not helping the Palestinians. Israeli ambassador to the UN, Danny Danone, tells CBN News hatred remains strong due to shocking incitement found in the Palestinian Authority school curriculum. Today, a Palestinian child, when he goes to the UNRWA school, he comes out hating Jews, incited, supporting Hamas. It shouldn't be that funding from Western democracies will support such curriculum. Israel welcomed the U.S. decision to stop funding UNRWA more than a year ago. Researcher David Bedin has studied Palestinian school books and UNRWA facilities for years. He says while it's not likely UNRWA will be shut down, donor nations should put conditions on their aid. Number one, take the school books away. We have school books here. Which, uh, which honor murderers and throughout the books and talk about dying for the right of return. Number two, give people the option to leave the camps. Number three, there's $1.2 billion flowing into the UNRWA camps without any real oversight. In 1978, Dalal al-Mugrabi led a terror cell that killed 38 people, including 13 children. She's pictured as a martyr in a new school book for 321,000 children. Dalal al-Mugrabi, as a role model for the children who are taught the concept in UNRWA schools of the right of return by force of arms. The right of return refers to the Palestinian demand that refugees from 1948 and millions of their descendants be allowed to return to their homes, most of which no longer exist. My name is Rasan Kuwa, and I am a refugee from the village of Malka. Today, Malka is a busy Israeli residential and commercial area in Jerusalem. Badin's group recently produced a short film in Bethlehem's Aida refugee camp just a few miles from Jerusalem. There's no two-state or one-state solution. There's only one state, and it will be Palestine forever. And what was taken by battle will be reconquered through battle. We must conquer our land by force. This land is our land. There's no way to divide it. The children grow up with the idea that there is no Israel. It has to be ignored and or wiped out. Badin believes the seeds of the next violent Palestinian uprising against Israel have already been planted in these camps. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. 
I talked about UNRWA and the Israeli elections with both CBN senior editor John Waggy and CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl in our studio. John and Julie, thanks for being with me on uh, Jerusalem Dateline. John, first to you about the elections. Here we are looking at a third election within a calendar year. Uh, what's, what's your take on this? Well, it's, it's something that uh, is a necessary evil because uh, the electorate has chosen the makeup of the Knesset three times now. Well, once in April, once mm -hmm. in September, and it will be the third time in March. And, and it's stalemate. That's what it is. And I think part of that is because the whole intent of the elections in the first place on the behalf of many people was to just get a prime minister other than Benjamin Netanyahu. And they haven't been able to do that, and so they'll go for round three and see if the addition of an indictment will make a difference in how the electorate comes out to the polls in, in March. Yeah, looking ahead to the third time, do you see any hope for a break in this gridlock? I have a gut feeling that there are going to be changes this time. I can't tell you what they're going to be, but it could be external with Iran or Hamas or the Palestinians. It could be internal with something that we find out about the court system or the indictment or something that exculpates Netanyahu. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's going to be, but I don't think it's going to be on dead center like it was the last two times. Yeah. Also, this week we have a story on UNRWA. And, uh, you know, the UN is voting to maintain UNRWA once again. Uh, what are we finding out about this? Yeah, well, you know, UNRWA has been there for 71 years. Every other refugee in the world is taken care of by another UN organization, except this one. Uh, most refugees are only refugees for a few years. These refugees have been there. Their children, their grandchildren, their great-grandchildren are still considered refugees. Mm -hmm. They're kept in the camps. They're forced to stay in the camps if they want to maintain their status. And um, I think, you know, really there's a cry to stop the funding of it or mm -hmm. at least put some, really some restrictions on it. And it also seems like just one generation after another indoctrinated into what, uh, what UNRWA has been teaching in their school books that we've heard from David Bedin. Yeah, and it's bad and it's negative. It almost seems, when you listen to it, it's like, wait, are we still at that stage? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's like they're, they've been cut off from the rest of the world and they're still saying the same things they've been saying for decades. I feel bad for those kids yeah. that are being indoctrinated <laughs> with lies, basically, yeah. and really being kind of forced. If this was happening anywhere else in the world, I think they would call it child abuse. But, you know, they're being indoctrinated to kill themselves, to yeah. kill another people, and it's bad. Well, it's a sad legacy of the Israeli-Palestinian uh, yeah. conflict for, for decades. Uh, Julie, John, thanks for your expertise. And uh, John, we'll see you at the next election there in March. Up next, the shocking story of how a UN agency is persecuting Christian refugees and what some are doing about it. Roman soldiers destroy the Second Temple of Jerusalem. Centuries of eyewitnesses say the temple treasures survived. But where are they? They went from Jerusalem to Rome, Rome to Carthage, Carthage to Byzantium. Historians are silent about what happened to it next. CBN Documentaries presents the worldwide release of Treasures of the Second Temple. So does it still exist today? A story of mystery. Where is it? Calamity. Most of the victims were butchered. And destiny. The possibility to dig is impossible. Get your copy of Treasures of the Second Temple. Yours for a gift of any amount to CBN Documentaries. This holiday season, take a spiritual journey through the biblical stories of Christmas. In CBN's free devotional, Advent of the Messiah, you'll be amazed at how God's Word comes alive. Draw closer to Jesus this Christmas season and experience His presence as Emmanuel, God with us. Get your free copy of Advent of the Messiah. Call 1-800-700-7000 or go to cbn.com slash advent for your free devotional. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. 
Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit cbnnewschannel.com. Hey, if you're tired and exhausted all day, you can't think clearly, and you really just need a cup or even a pot of coffee to get through your day, then join me, Dr. Josh Axe, for this new series where I'm going to teach you how to transform your diet and use essential oils and supplements to get a better night's sleep. Get Protect Your Sleep and live your best life with innovative information from five leading sleep experts. If you're not a great sleeper, you can do things to make yourself a great sleeper. If you're already a pretty good sleeper, you can enhance your sleep and be even better. Discover a sleep-enhancing bedtime routine. How to put insomnia to rest. Learn how to relieve pain that disturbs sleep. And much more in Protect Your Sleep. Everything you do, you do better with a good night's sleep. Wake up to your best life. Call 1-800-700-7000 to get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Don't miss out on this brand new series. The rise of ISIS and the Syrian civil war created millions of refugees throughout the Middle East. But as Dale heard reports, Christians are still victims of discrimination and persecution, not by Islamic radicals, but by a UN agency. A UN refugee camp in Jordan. Christian Syrian refugees tell us they have been blocked by Muslim UN officials from living in these camps or getting any help whatsoever. One of them, Hassan, a Syrian convert to Christianity, told us in a phone call, Muslim UN camp officials knew that we were Muslims who became Christians, and they dealt with us with persecution and mockery. They didn't let us into the office. They ignored our request. Hassan and his family are now in hiding, afraid that they will be arrested by Jordanian police or even killed. There is clear evidence of discrimination by the United Nations Refugee Agency in Jordan against Christians. And it's part of the reason that while tens of thousands of Syrian Muslim war refugees have been settled in the United States and Britain, less than 1% have been Christian. And the two governments that could stop this persecution of Christian refugees, the U.S. and Britain, have done little to nothing about it. Christian refugees in the Middle East have been persecuted, ignored, and finally forgotten by Western governments. But a former Archbishop of Canterbury is saying, enough. Lord George Carey has announced he's suing Britain's Home Office, alleging that politically correct officials have been institutionally biased against Christian refugees. He also wants to find out why out of the 60,000 Syrian war refugees accepted into the United States and Britain in 2014, less than 1% were Christian. Lord Carey's attorney, Paul Diamond, explains the case. So you have this absurd situation of a scheme is set up to help Syrian refugees and the people most in need, Christians who have been genocided, they can't even get into the UN camps to get the food. The Muslim UN guards will block you getting in. They'll laugh at you and mock you and you threaten you. Another Syrian refugee, Timothy, who told us he became a Christian after seeing Jesus in a dream, said he was also blocked from entering a refugee camp by Muslim UN officials. All of the United Nations, almost of them, 99%, they are Muslim. They were treating us as uh, enemies. Sunni Muslim officials have blocked the way, laughed at these people, threatened them, said you shouldn't have converted, you're an idiot for converting, you get what you get, words to that effect. Lord Carey says by doing nothing, Western governments are complicit in what he calls the steady crucifixion of Middle East Christians. No simple measures are taken by both the British and the American government. It'd be simple just to open up a refugee camp for religious minorities, for Christians, Yazidis, whatever they are, and they'd be safe, but no one does that. Christian refugees who have managed to make it to Western countries are increasingly being deported back to Muslim nations where they face grave danger. 
Swedish attorney Gabriel Donner, who represents Christian asylum seekers, says Sweden is now deporting up to one-third of Christian refugees back to Muslim nations, where they're likely to be imprisoned or killed. One of those Christian refugees now facing imminent deportation is Iman Amir Arang from Iran, shown here with members of his church in a foot washing. He says Swedish officials either did not understand or care about the evidence of his Christian faith. So many atheists living in Sweden or are from Sweden, so they can't believe in somebody that believes in God. Just because they don't believe in our Lord, they don't trust anybody else to believe in the Lord either. They don't understand the message in the Bible. It's just completely alien to them. President Trump told CBN News in 2017 that Christian refugees would be given a priority, but Muslim governments officially classify Christians as security threats, causing their asylum applications to Western nations to be rejected. The UN's refugee agency did not respond to our request for answers. Lord Kerry has publicly appealed for financial help in his suit against the British Home Office, which has already threatened the 84-year-old churchman with all court costs if he loses. Meanwhile, the Home Office is spending a lot of time and money on the resettlement of ISIS children. Dale Hurd, CBN News, London. Coming up, he's the next president of Guatemala, and he's taking a bold stand for the state of Israel and the Jewish people. Now, for a limited time, you can get five of CBN's critically acclaimed documentaries. Experience the rebirth of the modern state of Israel. A historic bond between the Jewish people and the land of Israel cannot be broken. Relive the battle for Jerusalem in the Six-Day War. Jerusalem is yours forever. Discover how Israeli volunteers are changing the world. When people need us, we volunteer and we come and help. Explore the world of Israeli technological innovation. We're people of dreams. God gives us dreams. And that's really the roots, I think, of, of much of our innovation. And understand the biggest land dispute in history. Many Palestinian Arabs claim that the Jews stole Arab land. But is that the real story? This exclusive Israel DVD collection can be yours for a gift of $40 or more. Call now or go online to get your Israel DVD bundle today. Hello, I'm Dr. David Perlmutter, board certified neurologist and number one New York Times bestselling author. Wouldn't it be great to boost your energy, eliminate brain fog and even reverse brain disease? Well, you can and I'm gonna show you how along with some of the world's most well-respected brain experts in this DVD, Protect Your Brain. Get Protect Your Brain, a free DVD only from the Christian Broadcasting Network, featuring experts on the cutting edge of neuroscience and brain health. No matter how many times you've failed in the past, you really can do this. In Protect Your Brain, you'll discover simple strategies to keep your brain young and healthy. Improve your memory. Discover the gut-brain connection in Protect Your Brain. Get your free copy at CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000. If you want to improve the quality of your life, get the DVD Protect Your Brain and get it today. Last year, Guatemala became the second nation after the United States to move its embassy to Jerusalem. Its president-elect visited Israel, and he vows to continue Guatemala's long history of standing with the Jewish state. In 1947, during an historic UN vote, Guatemala voted along with the United States to support the establishment of a Jewish state. Guatemala's president-elect Alejandro Giamate says his country will continue to stand with Israel. For us in Guatemala, Israel means a lot, and we're going to defend Israel just as even Israel has defended us. We're going to be allies all of our lives because we're united by the same faith that leads us to believe in the same God, and we will be on par with Israel defending them. The enemies of Israel are our enemies, 
and the friends of Israel are our friends. The president-elect delivered an address at the Friends of Zion Museum in Jerusalem. He has a compassion, he has a conviction for the Jewish people and for the nation of Israel and for the promises in the Bible, and he's acting that out in a beautiful way. Israel was Jim Attei's first international trip in his new role. For Israelis, it means a lot. This is extremely important to Israel because, unfortunately, as you well know, we can count our friends probably in our hands. Uh, Guatemala has always been a steadfast friend of Israel from the beginning of the establishment of the State of Israel. We do have friends around the world where we speak about our enemies, but we are grateful to our friend, to President Yamate from Guatemala, who came here and said, not only I will stand with you in Jerusalem, I will help you to bring more embassies to Jerusalem. As soon as he is inaugurated, Giamate plans to designate Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. The president declared today, and he says also that the, the enemies of Israel are the enemies of Guatemala, and the friends of Israel are the friends of Guatemala. So he is also working very hard to be able that in the first months of his mandate, he will be able to have a more active role so we can be able to help Israel in anything that they need in these terrible times that they are living in the world with anti-Semitism. Israelis hope more Latin American countries will follow Guatemala's lead to move their embassies to Jerusalem. They see it as a win-win. It's actually amazing what can happen from an embassy being here. I can tell you what's going on with the American embassy being here. There's so much more trade, there's so much more conversations of how we can add value to each other, spread technology and know-how with each other. The same is happening with Guatemala. Any country, I believe, that decides to become Israel's friends, move their embassy, will only benefit. And of course, we benefit from the friendship and from trade ties and from everything else that comes with it. Jerusalem Deputy Mayor Hassan Nahum says Guatemala's move is a sign more nations around the world are recognizing Jerusalem as Israel's eternal capital. Coming up, Israel's Yad Vashem Holocaust Memorial receives an unlikely gift from an unlikely businessman. Christians around the world are standing with the Israelis, but why? In CBN's free magazine, Friends of Israel, you'll discover why Christians are supporting the Jewish state how Israel is fulfilling prophecy as a light to the nations, and ways you can pray for the people of Israel. Israel needs the support of friends like you. Call now or go to CBN.com to get your free copy of Friends of Israel. Watch breaking news, in-depth exclusive stories and programs from health to entertainment. You won't find anywhere else the CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. Enjoy credible news reporting from around the world. Discover inspiring programs and stories of hope, all in one place from a Christian perspective. The CBN News Channel, a perspective you can trust. To watch the CBN News Channel, download the app or visit CBNNewsChannel.com. How would you like to get a redo on your health, on your body, on your arteries, so you could have the energy you had 20 years ago? The great news is you can. I'm Dr. Mike Roizen, chair of the Wellness Institute at the Cleveland Clinic. I've written four New York Times bestsellers, but even better than having to read all that, you can listen to this DVD and watch it. Protect your heart? Yes, you can. Here's how. Go to CBN.com or call 1-800-700-7000 for your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Let the medical experts show you their new discoveries on how to avoid heart disease and even reverse it. Easy steps to uncover the hidden dangers in your medicine cabinet, reduce stress, and get a complete do-over for your health. Call 1-800-700-7000. That's 1-800-700-7000. Or go to CBN.com to claim your free copy of Protect Your Heart. Israel's Holocaust Memorial Yad Vashem received a gift of artifacts associated with Adolf Hitler from a very unlikely source. CBN Middle East correspondent Julie Stahl has that story. Businessman Abdallah Shatila is a Lebanese-born Christian from Switzerland. Israeli President Reuven Rivlin recently honored Shatila 
for purchasing hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of items connected to Hitler and giving them to Israel. What you have done, it's so simple. You have said to the whole world, never again. Rivlin said the act would convey the legacy of the Holocaust to the next generation. It is something that shows the whole world how to fight fascism, how to fight uh, the, uh, the gloriness of uh, people who are holding hatred and incitement against other people. The gift comes as Shatila's own country is dominated by Hezbollah, which calls for Israel's destruction. We think that you have done something towards the whole humanity, and we appreciate that very much. Shatila bought the items at an auction to keep them out of the hands of neo-Nazis who would have idolized them. Instead, he planned to destroy them. And during the 24 hours that it took before the sale happened, I said to myself, I said, I cannot destroy something that doesn't belong to me. Even though at the beginning I did it for humanity, I believe that the Jewish people are the only one that have the right to decide what to do with the items. Shatila says he's been threatened for his action. I got a few messages saying that I was a traitor, uh, saying that I helped the enemy, and uh, also some messages of people warning me not to go back to Lebanon. We heard about the auction, and we understood that someone has to stand up to make sure that this kind of collection would not come to the wrong hands, as it was said correctly, because it might have been personality worship among the circles of neo-Nazism and followers of Nazism today and all kinds of anti-Semites. Shatila originally approached the Jewish organization, Karen Hayasod, United Israel Appeal, who then donated the items, including Hitler's top hat and a silver-plated edition of Hitler's Mein Kampf, to Yad Vashem. And when I receive messages that saying that, that there are kids and grandkids of Holocaust survivors, I feel shiver in my hands and I understand how important this is for the Jewish people. Clearly, I would like that this message goes beyond that's the Jewish world. Justice is important and doing the right thing is very important. Julie Stahl, CBN News, Jerusalem. For many Christians, the place to be for Christmas is Bethlehem and the Holy Land. This year, Israel is expecting an influx of Christians from all over the world. Israel is prepared to welcome around 165,000 visitors to the Holy Land this Christmas season. Christmas is already in full swing in Bethlehem. Hundreds of people recently packed the birthplace of Jesus for the annual Christmas tree lighting celebration. The event took place in front of the Church of the Nativity, the spot many Christians believe is the place where Jesus was born. On Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, Christian pilgrims will get the chance to travel to Bethlehem from Jerusalem using a free shuttle service offered by the Israeli Tourism Ministry. The Tourism Ministry will also help Christians celebrate the miracle of Christ's birth by hosting its annual pre-Christmas reception for Israeli Christians and church leaders. Ambassadors, leaders of Christian organizations in Israel and other dignitaries are expected to attend the celebration. The tourism ministry says 55% of all tourists who visited Israel in 2019 were Christian. If you can ever come to Bethlehem at Christmas time, it can be quite an experience. Well, that's all for this edition of Jerusalem Dateline. Thanks for joining us. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. I'm Chris Mitchell. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you next time on Jerusalem Dateline.